Hemant, uh, welcome to E-Times and uh, first of thank you so much for doing this, right? And so what we're trying to do here is, uh, is this new weekly series called A Film That Changed My Life. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. So where the attempt is to speak to, you know, interesting filmmakers, artists and actors in general from the film fraternity and try to get recommendations, talk to them about films that, that you know, have had a, a massive impact on them. It could be a film that you, you you know you might have watched as a kid or something fairly recent. So you know, mm-hmm. but the idea is to just talk films with her. Yeah. So, but I mean, before we come to your pick, you know, I would want to know: uh, Would you categorize yourself as a cinephile? And uh, do you feast on like say new discoveries and be like somehow manage to source them by hook or crook? <laughs> Very much so, Andre. I. Uh, uh... I got into films fairly late, as in cinema muncha northa there, but uh, as a as a medium of expression, as as something that I can do, was fairly late. But once I got into it, I for all practical purposes can say that I'm a proper cinephile. Uh, I I like I had this crazy thing of downloading films from all parts of the world. This is pre Netflix era days. In fact. I used to do- download films on dial-up connections. So yeah, oh, wow. that, that, is, that is how I saw all the, you know, the trains are flying and uh, your your Russian films. Uh, the, it, it was almost like illegal side go but allowed could have DVD scope or though. It was that kind of a thing. So I, I still have a huge DVD collection. Uh, I used to watch uh, and regularly be a regular. Download models are very much. How the how the how the. But Andre, Eva, how how now Andre with with Netflix and all the OTT stuff around, do you binge on stuff? Are you someone who like sits and watches? No, TV? I I uh, I feel it's become a little. Uh, uh, I I my watching of films is reduced drastically i especially don't watch films when i am making one i usually watch it when i am on my downtime uh and there's an excess now there's uh, you know like i had like a huge collection of about 40 gb of uh, you know swedish and uh, norwegian uh, you know crime thrillers they're famous for crime thrillers and i used to pride myself with with that collection uh ivaga it's like netflix really there's a huge library so i feel i feel kind of jealous about my collection uh, yeah, being... are, when you source them out you know from unconventional methods correct there is a joy to it, it feels yeah, like a treasure hunt now. Yeah. now it it, it is just it's available too easily so i the, the interest in terms of going and watching yeah, it is a little spoiled i think <laughs> yeah and also also i feel i feel that there is it's it's too overwhelming and i don't like uh, the idea of watching a show start to finish in one sitting i that that sort of lets uh, you know doesn't allow me to savor the finer details of performances or writing or the way the, the particular series has, has been made so i con- consciously make it a point at home uh between my wife and i we, like i she wants to watch i'll be like i want to watch only one episode you watch the rest i'm going to watch only one episode on that so, so there is you know about watching stuff when you're making something when you're working on something there is going to be one of my questions so are you very careful of you know about what you're watching when you're, especially when you're writing something or when you direct for example right now is it uh, see, the thing is, i i uh, it i don't do it from the sense of oh if i watch something i'll get influenced not from that sense it's right. just that i like to stay in the space of my story uh mentally so which is why i don't like distractions of other stories at that point of time so it's not from influence see the thing is influence visually is something that subconsciously will happen you know i don't believe this whole uh, this nonsense of oh, original film uh you know it's a, i mean see the problem is that there are a lot of people who go and blatantly copy right who who will blatantly take an idea and then put their name against it it's a very uh, you know uh, 
it's a it's a very thin line and i am i am i am very conscious of that line whenever i am conscious of the fact that i am taking something from somewhere i immediately discard it and write a scene afresh like even with saptasagara i can very confidently tell you there is nothing new about the story it's the same old story all the stories are the same it's about how you treat the story how you make the story and what do you choose to focus on in the story and what do you leave out is what makes the film fundamentally unique to me from my perspective so and so visually i don't get caught up with this whole oh influence avartini i i, be, I believe that unless until somebody stays in a i have said this earlier also unless and until some filmmaker stays in a room completely devoid of any sort of uh, cultural reference like art and then he comes and makes a film that is true original piece of work you know and i'm very sure that even that story that he makes will have some some remnants of some film which is earlier made so uh, i i personally don't watch like to watch other films and other stuff when i'm making the film is because of the space and the the story the elements of the story are constantly sort of you know in in my head so i like to safeguard that space so uh, that is why i don't if a film were to like in this case in saptasagar rache lo case i mean this is this is a pretty big project in terms of production alwa no no and then when something sort of spreads across 6 months to a year i mean do you still sort of refrain from you know watching stuff or are you able to sort of you know uh, no no as in i it's not like it's not like i switch off and i don't watch anything alwa mm-hmm. i do watch like i do right. watch on occasional film here and there mm-hmm. but i'll probably watch like three films in a day when i am not working on a film or a, or two films in a day or two films in two days or you know whatever so i'll probably watch maybe one film a week when i'm making a film so it's it's almost like that so uh it's not like i completely stop my i'll i'll go to i'll go mad for six months if i don't watch anything <laughs> so you know the topic of influences i want to come back to that uh, before that i would want to first probably you know talk about the topic in hand which is if you were to name one film i know it's a tough call but if you were to name that one film that that's had a massive impact on your film that changed your life so to speak uh, what would it be so uh there is one 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 i wouldn't say uh it was one film but it was one phase of about 10 days which really you know made me a different person right uh right after engineering i was very sure that i didn't want to do anything related to engineering i was very sure that i wanted to be a writer of some sort i wasn't sure if i should be a play writer a film writer or just a writer you know so uh, i just i just felt useful when i typed words uh, otherwise most of the time i just felt like i was a failure because engineering made me you know go through that thing where i felt i was dumb i still feel that way many times it's only when i'm doing it's only when i'm doing a film do i feel like okay my brain is of some use it can do something because academically i've never really excelled in any aspect of my life i've always been you know into in into extra curricular stuff all right. along my school so right. there is this one phase when i just got an introduced to cinema i loved right. stories i i used to read a lot i used to read yeah. a lot of comics and novels and books and not what not right. so i got introduced to introduced to suchitra film society right. and uh, in banshankri and they had this program where you for 250 bucks uh, you know you become a member and every friday or every week every week there's a screening it's right. like what madness is this for 250 <laughs> bucks you can to watch films and uh, there was like you know they were doing a new wave french new wave uh, oh, okay. uh, week uh, it was like a homage to truffaut francois right. truffaut yeah so the first film that i watched there were eight people in suchitra and it it was the slightly dilapidated version of suchitra not right. what it is today today right. it's beautiful they have done yeah. up, done it up really well yeah so i saw it there with the creaky seats and literally eight people and out of those eight people some five people were like really old walking <laughs> walking ogi dro dari tappi ange illa cinema ki irutte baro nodona tara idara mudukru bandidralle 
so i was like i didn't know what to expect no expectation right. nothing about the film right i saw 400 blows and it blew my brains out like right. in the sense i realized this is also something that is cinema which right. i have never experienced before right. you know i have not seen a film that would made which, which made me feel a certain way mm. uh you know uh mm. in in the popular stream right sure. so mm. it's not a film that has a great story it's it's mm. just a experience it made me feel a certain way and mm. probably because of where i was at in my life feeling very restless and confused and not feeling confident right i was not it was not the best phase you know i was still mm. i was having like a severe identity crisis sure. so this film was very uh, it resonated a, mm. in a big mm. way sure and i went back home i read up a huge deal about the film and mm-hmm. i found out that the following day since it was like a tribute or homage to to for mm-hmm. uh this is one of the four parts of the anton dunel right. uh, yeah. uh, series right so i ended up watching uh, bed and board and you know i just fell in love with right. with that experience sure right and i am the kind i am the kind of a person who is when i like something i just don't know how to press pause on it i just right. go like full on into it obsessive yeah yeah totally uh, it's it, <laughs> which is why i keep you know joking that i should have never i mean it's it's, good, it's a blessing in disguise that i have never come across any sort of narcotics okay. a, ever in my life i would my life would drastically be off in another uh, segment but Great. i became obsessed with french new wave i right. watched almost uh, so i downloaded managed to get every single true for film Mm. every single good art film watched mm. it over and over again mm. so i was very influenced by that mm. and then i watched uh, cinema paradiso and mm-hmm. that film sort of you know i i i watched that film about 19 20 times right it, it's a three and a half hour long film right i can never tire of that film it is just everything that is beautiful about cinema is captured in that that in yeah. that cinema right, so right, right. so i think I th- after that that whole you know i think that uh, tribute uh, was about 4 days or 5 days right. in suchitra right i was hooked i was hooked i was just uh, you know regularly my the thing is the way i started looking at films changed mm-hmm. after that mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. i realized a sense of grammar to it a sense of mm-hmm. art to it Mm. and even films that i had you know like vishnuvardhan or cinema thumba ishta nanage anand sir cinema thumba ishta annor cinema thumba nodidini so uh, all these sin, uh, all these films i started examining with this new perspective right. about storytelling and you know right. the dramatics the the nuances in terms of how characters are built mm. uh, why certain films you know uh, have that mass appeal uh, i started looking at looking at it from a very serious student mm. of cinema sort of a thing mm. so i think that week was very you know impactful so i i would say it was almost like you know, amalgamation of three four films so post this retrospective of true for uh, at suchitra and then did it solidify your plans to become a filmmaker or what was it i mean what phase were you in at that point yeah so i was i was i was at a phase where i didn't really know what is it that i want to do sure. uh, but it it definitely pushed me in the direction of cinema and uh, when i we talked about and you're in engineering you said right this is right after i passed out of engineering this was early right. 2005 uh, so when you do that phase yeah it's like yesterday <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah but uh, yeah uh, 21 22 yeah right. so uh, <laughs> so yeah uh, it 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 definitely propelled me in the direction of films and it, that just took me down a weird rabbit hole where i just watched all kinds of films and i got i mean there were these i mean i i suppose there are still uh, i don't know in, if it's if it exists in its exact shape and form now uh, because mm. of the internet but there were a lot of these film clubs mm. where mm. they would do a screening i remember going to this place in hennur or somewhere where there was a mm. club where mm. they used to do screen films right and they used to discuss films you ah. know after the screening right man I, <laughs> with those experiences were scary because paradise i know <laughs> uh, it it was scary because i realized the the danger of intellectualizing cinema 
Uh, <laughs> I it too much because it was one of those where I watched the film and the film didn't work for me. Okay, right. it didn't connect. I was like, "What the hell is? What is happening?" I'm not able to understand the film. Right. And then after the film, there's like a row, like a huge applause, and there's like people all around me, and they're like, obviously people who are much experienced, much older, right. well read, and mm. and they're having like in-depth conversations about the color of the wall in the background and how in uh, how it signifies this emotion. I was like. do who you were looking at the wall i was i was half asleep i was like you know i and then i went through this phase where it was just like i just wanted to watch a film that made me yeah, feel yeah yeah you know okay. yeah right and then i saw a lot of these kind of films where it was very cerebral it was right. about how intelligent sure that that sort of uh, was something that i realized i don't want to do you know right. i want right. to i want to make films for the heart i want to right. make films that create a human experience i don't mm-hmm. want to separate the the you know the mm-hmm. uh, it's it's a it's 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 a very uh, i would say a very oppressive thought process that we have to teach what good cinema is sure. to people right. i think cinema is it's like it's like saying you have to love a certain kind sure. you have to eat a certain kind of food mm-hmm. i think uh, that is something that i am very against so i right. think to each his own that is the beauty of cinema okay right and and azad mele you know you know the more you watched uh, and of course you assisted kasarli sir and then you know the, the sort of the training part happened there but how much would you you know would you say that the watching or you know learning from films has happened over the years i mean how much have you learned from films you think oh massive yeah massive like great deal like, in the sense of like every every book that you read Mm. you learn up storytelling a little more little bit right. right you know there's so much to take out of it from a craft perspective right. so even films i still remember you know how uh, how you can do uh, a very complicated emotion mm. which is one shot you know mm. like mm. those kind of things when you see ha- mm. see have you know see it happen in front of you mm. and you experience it mm. you realize the power that you can wield Uh, with mm. the camera and mm. with with performers so mm. so the craft becomes so important so mm. i'm i'm still learning every time i watch a film right. there's something that you know that that makes you that makes the brain go oh, wow how did they you know how did they do this how, how right. did they get this shot and why was this scene written in a certain way why was it structured in a certain way right so right there's an immense amount of learning uh it is not practical it's not practical learning i i right. think i got all like you said i think all the practical learning i ha- happened on the field when i was working as an right. assistant right. with kasarli sir and when i was mm. experimenting on my own, on my own time mm. making short films mm. that's where i learned the most in terms of right. what is possible what is not possible right. but uh, it's the cinema is the best textbook for a film student you right. know for somebody who wants to learn films they should watch films right I mean, do you, do you subconsciously seek a certain kind of influence or a certain kind of a certain aspect in of you know, in, in films today, or are you able to watch it just as an audience and you know probably enjoy it for what it no, is? No, I can't. Uh, I mean, see, uh, when I uh, I'm not always switched on in terms of uh, mm. being in that film student space, mm. but there are certain films that just wow you so much. Mm. Uh, you know, not in terms of uh just the emotional aspect of it mm-hmm. even a great like a commercial film like a kgf for example right it they just it creates such a mammoth experience mm-hmm. uh you know come back home and you it's it stays in your system it stays right. in your system and i keep thinking okay you mm-hmm. know how did this happen so the the film student aspect sort of kicks in after the film has been watched maybe not during the film so right. during right. the film i'm just watching a film right right but that that has happened with age when mm. when i was getting into films mm. every time i walked into a film i was walking in like a student mm. like mm. i want to learn i want to see you know so mm. now with time i feel there is you know i don't need to rush into it mm. i can always mm. yeah i can do both i can enjoy mm. the experience mm. and then analyze it and learn more out of that experience so would you say that happens later maybe you know in hindsight it happens i think it happens with a little bit of maturity it happens a little mm-hmm. bit with experience sure. uh, and so parallelly what was happening was was while i was doing while i was watching films mm-hmm. i was also learning under somebody right. Right. i was also assisting 
so there was like a you know it was it it became like a good uh, divide uh, in terms of what i can uh, uh, what i can learn while watching the film and what i can learn while working so it mm. you know it helped yeah i mean probably the respect to an audience you could there are two main categories i mean one category which likes a film and the other one probably judges a film right i mean uh, are you able to sort of separate the two and be like i just want no, to watch so the film that is that is one thing that i am very thankful for i don't know exactly what mm. triggered it maybe it was working with somebody like a kasper ali sir mm. uh mm. giri sir because working with giri sir removes audience out of the equation mm. right mm. it's not made for popular consumption it's right. not made to people don't queue up in front of theaters to watch unfortunately mm. people don't queue up in front of theaters to watch a girish kasar ali film which mm. which it would be epic if it were to happen right but since i started my journey there if i were to analyze it now mm. i have never looked at film from the scope of an audience so when right. when okay. people when people look at when people tell me that they went to the film uh, and then saw the audience reaction and they learned something mm. i don't look to do that at all mm. i think as filmmakers i should the reaction to what i have done mm. is not uh, is shouldn't be a factor in making your next film mm. you're not growing then you are right. still stuck with your previous film this is my personal belief no. Right, right. Which is why after Godi Banna and Kabul Udari, both films were successful. I went to the theaters for the first two days. Once mm-hmm. I realized that the investment is safe, the producer will make money, mm-hmm. uh, and the film is going to be a hit, mm-hmm. I stopped doing theater visits. I stopped mm-hmm. going and checking where the audience is going to laugh, where the audience is going to right. cry, right. because I am just sort of reinforcing a certain stereotype in my head mm-hmm. and not growing out. Mm-hmm. and becoming something else like i don't want to make a godi banna again i don't want to make a kavaludari again right. i want to do another film which is for me a space that i don't know i don't mm-hmm. know how the audience is going to react mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so i i don't i i don't particularly study the audience at all when i go to a film for me right. it's very personal what the film makes me feel right is very is, is very personal i examine it only from my perspective not from the audience's right. perspective right you know kavaludari gives me a nice segue to the topic of influence you know influence of cinema in general and you in your with your you know two films there is a certain kind of you know influence that is apparent maybe in terms of tonality or genre or this is subject matter right even sapta sagar da chelo is quite different or quite distinct you know with respect uh, compared to your other two films so you know how do you borrow especially in kavaludari's case which is crime noir how do you borrow a quote and quote western idea of a man for western sensibilities and then try to you know uh, introduce nativity in it and then try to make it local i mean how, what is that process like no so uh, i remember i uh, once i met uh, mr sham benegal mm. uh, just happened to meet him in a in a social event Mm-hmm. and i literally got to spend like 5 minutes with him because mm-hmm. a very dear friend's dad uh, you know introduced us and mm-hmm. i had literally 5 minutes and while talking to him one thing that he said sort of stayed with me and it is something that uh, grish sir had always mm-hmm. uh, sort of you know expressed without saying it implicitly right. mm-hmm. uh, in in typical fashion mm-hmm. that it's very important to be local for you mm-hmm. to become global Right. Right. you need yeah. to have a local sense so Absolutely. i always look from the perspective of growing a character in in his or her nativity mm. first mm. and then think of how do i make it you know uh, right. it's not the other way around i don't mm. take like for example this idea uh, for uh, making kavaludari in the noir space mm. was from the perspective of okay this character uh, it comes across this mm-hmm. set of bones and then mm-hmm. he goes into this so Correct. then i was thinking how do i treat this film mm-hmm. i developed the character and the idea around the character first mm-hmm. what is his predicament what is his state of mm-hmm. mind mm-hmm. and then i realized that i want to treat this film in a very noir way you sure. know yeah. so the nativity sort of came first mm-hmm. and then the treatment followed that right so 
it wasn't the case where i decided at the very beginning that i'm going to make a noir film or a right. noir influence film right. because kavludari you can take kavludari as a story and make it in a very commercial uh, you know in a very typical indian way also mm-hmm. but for me as i wrote the story uh, mm-hmm. and i understood the character i felt treatment is something that i feel gets left out in a lot of film discussions mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. very rarely do you have a uh, film uh, you know uh, discussions where treatment is something that yeah, spoken about because yeah. how a subject how a story is treated right define what film it becomes right, right? yeah like mm. the best example recent example that i can give you is garuda gamana rishabhavana right the film solely works on treatment right yeah. for me it is right. just the way if you examine it for a story if you examine mm. it for characters mm. ultimately what conveys the film and makes you feel that certain way is the way it's treated the way it is shot the way the scenes are played out there's a mm. certain deliberate element of pacing mm. now whether you like it or not is secondary sure. but the, the, that is what you can sort of take away from it you know that a subject can be treated a certain way right. so for me the treatment the treatment of the very western sort of you know mm. noir mm. came him when i had the story in story in in place and mm. then i started looking at it from the perspective of okay i'm going to treat it with a lot of contrast a lot of shadows mm. a lot of reflections and create that mood uh, mm. have typical noir elements in mm. the film so having grown up in bangalore and mysore so primarily in cities and do you find yourself thinking in english at all time and do you that does your mind work in english yeah it does uh, so it's like a it's is like a, 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 a healthy balance i would say an unhealthy balance of english and kannada right akka kannadiga nanu but uh, when i sit down to write uh, uh, when i sit down to write uh, right. english english alle baradu uh, uh, but uh, otherwise it's proper kannada i write dialogues everything in uh, right. i write all right. the i've written all the dialogues right. myself mm. so it's all kannada mm. only right right so but uh, uh, i lost in english... translation agutha andre i'm referring oh. to the same nativity but you know i think eastern janaka i think especially people who grown up in urban areas or get dialogues ella maybe they refer to hollywood films and or, you know in general the flow of it the lyrical rhythm of the dialogue also is very hollywoodish very western number do you do i have i've learned with time uh, i i know exactly what you're asking because i've learned with time my first film was a uh, english film it was a short film right. which i made in english right. i saw the film and i couldn't tolerate one minute of it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because i was like hey team aro like english al baat baat karta irukku ro adra it was just work ke aagta illa adu adige like you know tappide illa you know tappide illa ye yaak yeah. english al baat karta ire anta you know it kept feeling very alien right. so avaginda i decided you know it's very important that the nativity you might write a great dialogue in english right but adu correct agi kannada dalli punch aagodre adra adra you can't and you can't translate the dialogue you right. can't uh, it has to be so you ha- uh, so for me sometimes what happens is i feel like i've written a great line okay mm-hmm. now when i have to make the character say it in kannada i end up writing a totally different line right which is right, right. it's got nothing to do with the first line yeah. you know i that that is a it's like writing twice yeah it's painful you know, critic bharadwaj rangan he pointed it out pointed that out in i think with respect to zindagi na milegi dobara in the sense that those characters are never meant to speak hindi right correct so correct correct right i mean those characters from that demography couldn't speak hindi like that but yeah so, yeah yeah you know yeah. So okay, uh, so uh, we'll move on to the final question. So where I would, you know, want you to recommend five films of works of five filmmakers at least that uh, that you could recommend uh, to aspiring filmmakers. Uh, I would say uh, off the bat, Hitchcock because mm-hmm. Hitchcock's films are absolute bible for mm-hmm. somebody who wants to make films for people. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. it's it's pulp it's it's films that are made for the audience to feel a certain way right. you know yeah. uh, he is the master like he's right. genius at it 
Charlie Chaplin uh, mm-hmm. because his films again are for people who are rich who are poor who can speak mm-hmm. who can't speak mm-hmm. who are from one religion who are from another religion you can put all of them in the room and they will still like the film right when i mean charlie chaplin i mean your you know uh, your entire entire uh, early cinema sort of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, that 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 aspect of films mm. that came out mm. uh, buster keaton charlie chaplin mm. all these guys their films mm-hmm. uh, and then i would say i since i have worked with kasar ali sir and i i have seen the nuance that he brings uh, mm. to the film for me dweepa still is one of the greatest films made in indian cinema right. and it has received it is received i don't think it has received its uh, deserved justice yeah. production also, design yeah everything everything yeah. about that film and the way it was made and mm. uh, i i mean i i only see it uh, uh i didn't work on the film uh, mm-hmm. personally but i worked with sir i know mm-hmm. how he approaches mm-hmm. a film mm-hmm. at least like uh, i have been a small witness mm-hmm. to it and to make a film in the kind of limitations that he usually works with mm-hmm. and to do a film like dweepa is mm-hmm. just phenomenal what, what were your conversations like with him if you don't mind me asking why don't you make films for people <laughs> why don't you release films i always i always like the few conversations that i've had i was very young and he was very encouraging of dumb conversations with me uh, i used to bug him endlessly about yeah kya release madala nee yak gender yak tors parada cinema na ist agala ante guarantee and the thing that for me that i always had a issue with or a point of contention i might not have articulated it well with mm-hmm. sir but the thing was here was a man who was making a film like for example gulabi talkies is the film that i worked in it was basically about industrialization mm. about how the common denominator the lowest common denominator gets screwed in this process correct in right. the globalization process mm. how people will lose jobs and how their life gets affected and mm. that is what the film is about mm. unfortunately they will not see this film Right, you know right, right. for me i was like them at all yeah. what is the point then you know why and why i had to be making this film for them right so i think i think uh, that is the difference between your popular cinema and your you know mm-hmm. uh, slightly art film uh, space but um, uh, from a technical aspect from a craft perspective kasarali's films are uh, girisar's films are just mm-hmm. uh, phenomenal learning um i think uh, i have two more films two more films, yeah. i guess Truf- trufo is my favorite uh, one of my favorites yeah sure. uh, uh, and uh, i would uh, um, i i in an indian context i love raju hirani uh, mm-hmm. and uh, because of again how he can make mm-hmm. you know films reach in the mm-hmm. exact antithesis of what mm-hmm. uh, you know what a greaser uh, i mean what a casarolizer does with his film raju hirani yeah. is like the exact opposite it's like how do we reach everybody with this right you know yeah. so right. it's always good to educate yourself with opposite ends of the yeah. spectrum right uh, and um, uh, one filmmaker that i absolutely admire is ritwik ghatak uh, mm-hmm. yeah. because of how much of a visionary he was in terms mm-hmm. of what kind of films he made Absolutely. for Very his time yeah uh, bold and even uh, the techniques that was used mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, you know of course ray is ray mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. i think ritwik ghatak made films which were like mm-hmm. you know without cg without like uh, there's that film where there's a where there's a car that emotes mm-hmm. uh, I, uh, i i don't know I, i'm not able to recall the name of the film but the the primary character is a, is a, is a man and his car and right. this was made this was made like before technology yeah. even yeah. thought could be possible so right. i like I, i mean these are all filmmakers that i can sort of immediately think of but if you ask me this question 10 minutes later i will probably name five other filmmakers oh, yeah. sure, 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 sure. okay uh, wonderful raymond thank you so much you know thank you for giving us the time and all the insights 
it's been lovely catching up with you and looking forward to watching more of your stuff because Saptasagar Rajya look genuinely looks very very intriguing and interesting so looking forward to you know watching that on the big screen for sure yeah thank, thank you me. thank you i really uh it's a, you know i love doing conversations which just discuss cinema so i could go out talking so maybe we could do this every week. week why not just, just do it <laughs> sure sure <laughs> sure